My name is Simon Volta. Uh, again, the Regional Account Director here at V-Technologies, and we appreciate everyone's time this afternoon or this morning, uh, wherever you may be located. Uh, I am joined by Jason Ferguson, our account executive who handles our McCola uh, customer base, uh, and he will be taking us through a, a quick demonstration of the Starship integration uh, with McCola. Uh, today's demo, you'll see kind of how Starship handles kind of an international um, processing standpoint. Uh, so you can get a different flavor of what Starship's capabilities are um, versus a standard domestic shipment. Um, so he'll give you an, a, a quick taste of all of that. Um, and if you're interested in international processing, uh, this will be a good um, way to kind of see that integration as well. Uh, but before we start there, um, I'm going to take everyone through a quick presentation uh, and, sh and talk a little bit about uh, some of the um, some of the um, features of Starship and what you get over ship gear. Um, so as many of you know, uh, and are using the Shipgear product today, so many of you know the V Technologies name, how we, you know, where we come from. Uh, but just to kind of highlight one thing with Starship is that Starship is our flagship product. Um, that has been around since 1989. Um, so it has been around much, much longer than our Shipgear product has been. Um, it, you know, again, having over 30 years experience doing what we do, uh, with Starship being a multi-carrier solution uh, and many different ERPs, not just McCola, but McCola being one of our, um, you know, initial ERPs that we've integrated to. Uh, we've had that available since 2005 um, is our uh, plug and play functionality with McCola today. Um, and just recently, uh, we've been announced uh, earlier this year, for those who may have not seen the notifications, but uh, UPS nominated or actually rewarded us uh, their 2022 Premier Partner Award, which we're very excited about. Um, and that just has been handed out to five different solutions um, from a partnership perspective, um, kind of keeping up with the APIs, keeping up with the new features um, with UPS themselves. Uh, but we are very proud of this um, recognition um, and kind of continuing that partnership here for the foreseeable future uh, with them. So it's just some of the key features that we're going to talk about and uh, maybe highlight or touch on with you when we talk about Starship that kind of differs us than the ship gear product that we all are using today. Um, one, the main one here, it will offer you the ability to do parcel and LTL shipping from one application. So one thing to clear off right off the bat um, is that World Ship, Ship Manager, any post office, any LTL platform, any of those uh, platforms you may be processing with today, all will go away with Starship. Um, Starship, we take advantage of your account numbers. We load those into the application. We allow you to process all your documentation as well as see your own rates within the application as well. Um, so therefore you can go to one place, <clears throat> have everything consolidated and make it much easier and simpler to use versus having to go to multiple portals to get a rate from the carrier or to process a label um, uh, and kind of wasting a lot of time. Um, also, one of the things that you will see here is that we're gonna leverage line item detail, which you don't have today with Shipgear. Um, the line item detail or just all your individual SKUs coming in from McCola, um, those we um, <clears throat> are able to automate your labels and documents much easier. And what I mean by that is when you process in today's example, Jason will show you um, the international uh, workflow, you're gonna see a commercial invoice print, maybe a USMCA print if it's a Canadian shipment, right? But all of the information on those documents are already stored inside the Starship application in our database. So your HTS codes, the, um, uh, the names and descriptions of the product, uh, the values, all of those pieces that are needed for international shipping will be present on those forms for you. The bill of lading for those who are shipping LTL, right? All the same information, your NMFC and class information will be stored in Starship at the line item level. Therefore, we're going to bring that along into the appropriate document called the bill of lading for you. And if you're doing anything with hazardous, right? Same principle, we're going to generate hazmat profiles all the proper documentation will generate for you. So you as a user don't have to enter this information each and every time. One of the other features that stands out with Starship is the ability to drop ship. So some of you may be doing a lot of drop, ship drop shipping, some may not be, but if you're drop shipping for any one customer, right, we allow you to change your sender IDs on the label. We can disguise it by name only. 
name and location, whatever you decide that you want to do. Um, we can help you do that either in a, you know, kind of a, what we call a manual fashion with a drop down or in an automated fashion by triggering it with some sort of um, trigger from a cola uh, into Starship as well. Consolidation of orders is another big feature in Starship, being able to take multiple orders and bring them into one shipment. Um, that's you know, becoming more and more popular. Um, again, we have that capability of doing that as well. Rate shop, really, really, um, you know, uh, main feature of Starship that everyone seems to love, having the ability of clicking a button and seeing all of your carrier rates, not only just parcel only, if you have LTL providers on there, being able to see those simultaneously, kind of in a, you know, low to high fashion. Um, from a cost perspective, even bringing in transit times, you'll be able to see that in your rate shop and make the most uh, educated decision right then and there. And then last but not least, kind of your metrics for you know better negotiations, some analytical tools built around the dashboard, just giving you everything at your fingertips so you have the information you need for you know decision you need to make or maybe a location you need to open or whatever it may be you're trying to do, right? We can give you the information you're looking for just from our different metrics that we offer as well. So when we talk about the cloud, and you may all been hearing more and more solutions heading to the cloud, um, really what we look at is you know a few different pieces here. This is not just all of them, right? I didn't want to kind of draw a whole list out here, but just some of the things to highlight, right? Starship is always running on the latest version of software. Very important, making sure you're taking advantage of the latest features. We're always putting it either into a hot fix, a new production release, whatever it may be, but Starship is always running on your latest version of software. Uh, access to limited users and all of our carriers that Starship supports. So again, another popular feature. We don't have to worry about user counts anymore. We don't have to worry about, you know, you can get this carrier, but you need to pay extra for this one. Starship's going to give you access to all users and all carriers for that monthly subscription you're going to pay. Um, you can manage your seasonality better. Right now, we're not going to say, hey, for, you know, this one flat fee, you're going to pay all year long. You may go up and down throughout the year based on your peak and off-peak season. You can change that just like any online subscription, right? We give you that capability of going up, coming back down if you prefer. You can pay for an entire year, right? Whatever you decide and whatever is going to work in your business is up to you. Restricting access to user, <clears throat> restricting access to users on certain functions. Again, having administrative rights, giving access to those users for what they need access to is very important. You don't want maybe a front office to print a label. You can restrict that. You don't want shipping to be able to change a subscription uh, plan you're on. You can restrict that. So you have that capability from an administrator perspective to giving those users whatever access they need access to. And lastly, and probably one of the most important things, eliminating the unneeded IT expenses, right? So with ship gear today, you have to go in and upgrade ship gear every year once world ship decides to do an update. Same thing with ship manager. So you're updating potentially multiple platforms, two, three, sometimes four different times, right? So again, that costs money. Um, IT expenses are not cheap. We all know that. Um, so again, having the not the need to go in and doing any IT upgrades or maybe a, a change to a different server or whatever you may need to do, um, this again eliminates everything because again there is no server we're talking about here since that's being maintained in our Azure environment with Starship. Um, you're just worried about logging into a browser with a connector that's loaded onto that PC and going and just using the application itself. <clears throat> just to give you a quick view of the different carriers that Starship supports, right? We have about 25 different carrier applications here. We have a few 3PLs as well. Um, again, if I was mentioning these webinars, if you see a carrier that's not on here that you do use, don't be shy. Ask us. We do have the capabilities of potentially helping you with our bill of lading module, a user defined module in the parcel world. So again, there are options that we can potentially help you, um, you know, process the documents you're looking to process. We may not be able to rate quote those carriers, but again, we'll be able to help you uh, from a, a paperwork processing perspective and even getting a tracking or a pro number. Uh, generated as well. This is the dashboard I was referring to a moment ago, right? So you have capabilities like a heat map, a distribution map, we call it there in the upper right corner, showing you where all your distribution points are, the various pieces of information that goes into that map. That's in real time, right? Very beneficial when it comes to contract negotiations with your carrier, expansion purposes, 
So again, this can be utilized however you want, filtered however you want to see the information you need to see. Um, you have various charts that will show you high level detail from total cost, packages, shipments, you know, you name it, it's all listed there for you. So you can kind of get the trends of you know, either week over week, month over month, quarterly, whatever you want to view is up to you kind of from a filter perspective as well. Um, the dashboard has other things in reports, right? So if you need further details, there's a bunch of reports we also provide to you that can be downloaded as well uh, for a meeting or things like that. And before we sort of, you know, kind of um, kick it over um, and showing you the demo here, just want to really talk about kind of some of the risks that, you know, some users, you know, you're sitting there maybe thinking, well, I still have time with ship gear. And you do have time, right? There's still six months, you know, give or take to go before ship gear does sunset. However, um, to put this in perspective, we still have over 800 customers to migrate to Starship at this, as of this morning. Um, so when we look at that list of users, and right now we're already in an eight-week backlog, um, and soon to be nine weeks, right? So uh, every day we get more and more ship gear users, more and more new customers coming onto the platform and projects being created. Um, so as that continues, um, we're really looking at a significant backlog longer than potentially up to three, even four months by uh, the summer months coming here very soon. Um, so if you are thinking about making a change or this is something of interest to you all, um, the, the goal is to get in sooner than later. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, how you do that, right, and what we need from you to get that commitment made um, so we can get you a date for a kickoff call and things of that nature. But I do want to sense a stress of urgency is that um, there could be a moment in time where you are on a product that may not be supported. Um, you may run into issues in which we can't help you any longer. Um, and we want to avoid that from happening. So the sooner you can make that decision, the better off you are. I would definitely not wait till Q4 to tell us you want to move forward. You probably would be looking at some time in Q1 to be implemented uh, for Starship. So and we're not making any sort of exceptions for customers, unfortunately. It's sort of first come, first serve, um, just because we've had people already waiting for such a long period of time. So, um, so I do want to just stress that. Um, to everyone, but again, also want to make it a point that there are no more bug fixes or enhancements being made to the product. So if there happens to be an issue with ship gear, um, you're unfortunately in a, in a pretty limited position, right? Because there is no uh, changes that will be made to the product to fix those issues. We don't have any further developers working on ship gear at this point. It is sort of in its last leg. Um, so you are paying for a product in essentially a maintenance mode um, at this point in time. Um, so again, and the last point I'll make on this is promotional pricing, uh, which you'll see kind of a promo code here we have for June, right here coming up um, to offer you all, but you'll probably won't see promotional pricing mostly likely in the second half of the year. Uh, and that's just due to the sense of the amount of projects we have going on all at the same time. Um, so again, you're better off taking advantage of the promotions while they last. Um, and we'll talk again how at the end or how you can take advantage of those. So I'm going to turn this over to Jason, and he can take us through a quick demonstration. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason once again, and I'm going to run you through a Makora to Starship International workflow. Um, so once you create an order within Makora, Starship will automatically pull that in to this list that you see here. This is a list of all your available orders that are ready to be shipped. So you can filter this risk by any of these, by filtering on any of these columns up above. You can add any additional filter within here. Or just like ship here, you can come up top, type in that order number to pull up that order. Once you do find that order, all you have to do is hit that load button and it's gonna populate everything on one page for you within Starship. So this screen, this is gonna be the screen that the shipper will ship off of. So a couple of fields, just the reference up top. We have our sender ID. What this represents is where the package reads that it's coming from. For those who do drop ship, we can help automate that workflow and we can set up different drop shipping IDs to represent that the package is coming from a different company or a different location. Starship maps in all the customer information from Makora. So as you can see, my shipment is going to IKEA in Great Britain. 
all of this information automatically flows into Starship, so you will not have to manually enter any of that information. Next, if I look at that transportation section, you'll be able to see that I defaulted this to my UPS World Ride Express. If this is who I'm shipping with, all of this information is already, already here. I, of course, can click into this and change this if needed to. Since this is an international shipment, this is also where you come in and essentially create that commercial invoice. So in this section, you would just represent who's paying the duties and taxes, it's indicate if you're using a broker or an importer. If you go to the international section, you'll see that we have the, the value of the goods hard coded within here. You can indicate your reason for expert terms of sale. And for those shipments that do require an ITN, Starship can help streamline that process. We do have integration within the ACE portal to help bring back that ITN number. So that way it streamlines that overall process for you. Next, if I sh click into shipment details, you'll be able to see that Starship does support paper invoicing. So we can default this to automatic return on if necessary. Anything else within here, you can click on these to turn these on. You can have the automatic return on, or you can even create a rule within Starship that says turn these on for this customer every time I ship to them. Next, if we look at packaging, we do bring in the Ryan items and we do allow you to create a packaging database. So here you can, you can store all your most popular box sizes, dimensions to help streamline that process. If you do utilize the scale, we can turn on the scale mode on, weigh the package and Starship will automatically bring in that rate. And then if you look at the Ryan items, as Simon mentioned, Starship does save all that information to correspond with that item. So we're gonna bring in the value of the goods. Um, and for international, we're gonna save that Schedule B code, place that on the commercial invoice. So that way as a customer, you don't have to manually type that or indicate that every single time you ship that, ship that product. And then last but not least, if you do want to see what other options you have out there to ship with, you can hit this shop all button this is our rate quote functionality. Essentially what this does is it generates an API call to all the carriers on your license that can take the shipment. And it's gonna let you know what the cost for them to take that shipment is. Starship also allows you to mock up your free if you want to uh, pass that off to your customer. So in my example, I have a 20% markup and that explains the difference between my 899 and my 989 between the contract and the price charges. If everything looks good as a shipper, all I have to do is hit ship and process. What that does is generate the labels, generate the commercial invoice, and also writes back into Macora so that way you have all that information within there. So here's, here's an example of the commercial invoice that printed. As you can see, it has all the customer's information, the terms of the sale, the Schedule B code, item description, all that information you need in order to pass it off to customs. And then we have an example of our smart label here. Um, so we have our UPS label on the left-hand side, the packing list on the right-hand side. You can print it out on the same document as you see here. You can separate the two, point the label to your standard four by six printer, print the packing list to a separate printer, or if you have no need for our packing list, you can just print the label. So next, I'm going to jump back into Macora so that way you can see what information Starship written back. So if I open up that order, and I go to the header comments, you'll be able to see that I, all of this information was written back by Starship. So it does have the date it was shipped on, the carrier who took the shipment, the rate, the tracking information, the items that were within the shipment. And then if I go to the billing section, you'll be able to see that we have the freight cost being written back here. So 
So next, just jump back into Starship and go over the reporting tools that Simon mentioned. If you head over to our dashboard, this is where you'll find our heat map. So as Simon mentioned, we do provide a heat map that will, point, that will indicate where your most copper is shipping to. So you can see the areas that you ship to and the areas that you do not. You can add different charts on the right hand side. Anything within this list, you can create a chart and store that on your dashboard. If you need any advanced reporting, we do, do offer a reporting section here. So you can generate any reports on any of these items and you can also add filters to these reports. And then last but not least, our common problem is that now that you have shipped the package, how do we get the tracking information over to the client? So Starship does have an e-notify tool to help you with that. And what that is is an automated email that gets sent out um, from your company that's going to include the uh, hyperlink to the tracking information. So you can update this. You can customize this email. You can throw your company header up top, maybe put your website at the bottom, update the content. You have full flexibility in terms of what you want this to look like. Most importantly, it's going to contain that tracking information so your customers can then track their own shipments from there. So that's Starship for you and how to process an international shipment. I'm going to hand this back all over to Simon. Appreciate everyone's time today, and uh, thanks again for attending. Take care. Thank you, everyone.